All right, so I'm just at the end of this um, transition using a, a 300 amp <coughs> wave rectifier for this AC Lincoln 225 welder. Um, instead of going through the whole process here, and there are some people that have like a 20 minute video, I'll see if I can get this in like two minutes. Uh, showing you everything is kind of boring and redundant. What I want to go over is just kind of exactly what I did. No one really went over a whole lot in other videos. They just kind of did it and recorded what they were do doing, and you couldn't see a whole lot. So once you take the back of the case off here, you take the fan component out, you'll have that back there. Uh, <clears throat> all the screws and everything you can see inside here is the selectors, and you've got your brush that goes around to select whatever uh, setting you have. This is actually the positive electrode cable. This feeds up through the back here. You've got this metal plate that's on the inside with a screw inside. You can take that screw loose and you can actually take the original cables and pull them through the case so that you get more cable. And you're going to use the cable to go to the actual piece. I know I have this on here. I have uh, actually screwed it into the side of the case. I have a heat sink on, si on the side of it also. Um, but I want to go over most of the stuff you're going to need. Uh, this here, this is a uh, solid state uh, wave rectifier. And basically, everyone thinks that this is going to turn this machine into a DC. Uh, that's absolutely not the case. Uh, this is always going to be an AC welder. And what this does is it's a, called a wave rectifier is one way to say it. But technically what it's doing is it's trying to um, suppress the alternating current. The alternating current kind of goes in a squiggly line. The direct current's just straight across. There's two, two negative positive going straight across. So with this, it's just kind of like up and down the current. It's a signal. And what it does, it tries to compress the squiggly line of the signal. So instead of being a, a gap that's going to be between my fingertips of an area, it's going to actually compress it so it's actually a little straighter maybe. Uh, just to help the signal. It's not going to turn this into DC whatsoever. <clears throat> um, some of the things you need, like I went to, um, you know, AutoZone or um, the auto parts store, and this is just a 15 inch battery cable. This is perfect. It's like, I think I spent three or four bucks for it. And on the end, it's got the little battery cable clamp part. And then uh, you've got the other side with the hole already. Um, that's going to be clamping on to the actual piece that we have for our um, solid state rectifier. So you, if you look at it here, I'll see if I can get it to maybe zoom in a little. Um, if you look at the piece, the plastic piece, there's a positive right where my fingertips is. There's a positive sign in the plastic. We look at the other side, there's a negative side. On the top you see them squiggly lines. Uh, this side here with the squiggly lines is where you're going to actually feed into the power supply. will come in. Positive is on this side. They're next to each other correlating. And negative is on this side. So you're going to have... This piece is going to be set... Mine is technically upside down like this in there. The other one that I have. So we've got positive on this one that's on where my thumb is. That positive wire, if we look inside the case here, is going to be inside here bolted in. The positive wire feeds up to my original electrode holder wire. And that's positive. And that's what's feeding outside from the top. And that's on the positive side here. On the lower positive side below it, the other screw that's our bolt on, right below it, that's also positive, and that's going to be this wire that's feeding up here. That's going to be the new cable that's the battery cable, and it's clamped right onto the positive selector. You can see positive here for your, uh, your selector for your amperage. On the negative side of it, this here is actually where our power cord comes in, and uh, right here for the plug, sorry. And that's where our power cord comes in for the supply. Now, when it comes off of the actual uh, transformer here, that's this actual 
um, wire here that I have just labeled negative. <clears throat> this negative one is another battery cable that I had got, the other second one. It's going to feed down to the bottom of the actual bolt on the bottom. Now the top one is going to be your other negative electro. That's going to be your clamp, your ground, your negative ground here for your clamp. And that's going to still feed right through and you don't have to cut this. You don't have to cut your original pieces. I see some videos people were chopping everything up and one guy was like had two of these connected and nothing else and I don't know what he was thinking. Um, so what's really cool about you know using this one in particular is because you can see on the end it's got that little clamp that goes on the uh, battery top post and you just bend it off and cut it off with a hacksaw and the other side has already got a nice flat hole in it and it actually comes with a nice new zinc uh, bolt and nut and it's got a square head on the other side because it's curved so it holds the foot in there so you have on the top here and the bottom those those particular cables will go in there length is perfect you can see coming all the way to here and all the way to the top to have it down on the side so um, at this point I'm just going to take and just reference here this is a heat sink this heat sink is uh, just something that I had I have two of them these are identical I don't know I just got them from somebody it's flea market or garage or whatever but it's got the aluminum fins thick piece of aluminum you're going to want to put that on the back side of your piece your work piece has got a piece of uh, stainless on the bottom here might, that actually might be aluminum uh, and you're just going to bolt it right down here now I had to pre-drill holes into my heat sink piece uh, and then I pre-drilled some holes because I just kind of used some self-tapping screws to put it in the side because that works too. Um, I could, you know, I might put nuts and put something else in there, but right now it was just what I did. Um, apart from that, uh, I just use white lithium grease. Uh, they have like, I just sprayed it right here directly on the bo both sides, the back side of this piece and this. And uh, that gives some heat transfer. I think it's better than nothing. I, I forgot to uh, try to pick up some special heat transfer grease that you put on there. Um, for the intermittent use, I'm going to use this for, uh, you know, a few minutes a year. I think it'll probably be all right. Uh, but I also have this here because the fan's coming down. I think in my other workpiece, I may put a fan, another second fan, like get a computer fan or something if it seems like it's an issue. I'll run it and try to put the uh, heat laser gun on there eventually. But uh, So just to recap, I know that I was trying to keep this short and uh, just ended up going over. I guess there's more involved here than anything uh, you can just explain in two minutes. So basically, I've got the, plate, the uh, solid uh, state <coughs> relay module, power module right here. Went over where my positive and negative are, where they're running to in here. Um, Again, we've got the negative side here. This negative one is going to be my my electrode ground clamp. That's on the negative. If you have this 300, it's got two bigger bolts on top. And then on the other side, the positive, that's going to be the, the, the Stinger uh, electrode clamp um, for your actual electrode welding rod. And that's going through there, uh, right through the front of the case again. And right below that positive, we've got this, this uh, battery cable. And that goes right up to the copper piece for the selector switch for the power selector. And then we have the actual transformer on this side. Transformer is feeding down to the negative side here. Um, so hopefully this helps uh, to explain how this is working out. And then um, just so everybody understands, this is not converting this machine to DC. That would require different components, uh, very much more expensive. This piece was like $30. Uh, I think on and off for the cables in this, it was under 50 bucks. Not bad um, <clears throat> overall, but um, I think for $50, it's worth helping the signal. Why do I want an AC machine to begin with when I have a DC already? Well, I actually have another thing I'll show about converting this to run a TIG machine so you can weld aluminum. You need to have an AC welder. Hope that helps.